Welcome to Carly's Colorful Corner where you will learn how to draw a beautiful blue whale using pen and ink. Let's begin class with a regular ink pen and our finished piece. We will begin this class with a regular Bic or normal black ink pen. We're going to feather this ink pen along our sand line to kind of create a little bit of a border between our water and sand. Then use a side diagonal hatch line to kind of start filling in the planes of your sand. Now when your sand starts moving in a hill, you are also going to adjust your pen strokes to imitate said hill shape. This will give the illusion that your area is a three-dimensional space. Remember, keep your pen nice and light when we're working in this area because sand is supposed to be a light yellow color. You don't want to go too dark. Now we're going to start moving up our seaweed wherever you have it placed, but first let's consider where do you want your light source? My light source is going to be in the top left hand corner, so any, uh, not left hand, right hand corner, anything on my left hand side or the left hand side of my paper is actually going to appear a lot more darker than the right side. So what I'm going to do, or my best advice for you is to move up the seaweed at kind of like a curved line specifically because seaweed kind of wraps and flows and ebbs through the water so your line is going to want to kind of mimic that my my line is going to start tilting a little or curving a little more when we get to the more curvy parts of the seaweed. I'm going to curve out or bow out my line where the curve of the line itself is going to kind of stretch out towards the curve of the original seaweed shape. So watch as I'm doing this. I'm mimicking the way that the seaweed ebbs and flows through the water and giving it a realistic effect. You can use a 3-2-1 formula shading technique where you fill the seaweed entirely with one layer of ink and then you can fill in the shadowed part with an additional layer of ink and then the very edge of your shadow furthest away from the light source you're going to add a thin layer or a third thin layer of ink on top of that area just a little near the edge to kind of make that shadow wrap in and around the outside of the seaweed's body. So let's continue this with each plant before we move on to our whale. Fun tidbit for the day, as you're, at, as you're doing this, it's going to kind of look like an optical illusion. That's the main idea here. We're dealing with directional line and we're using a technique called contour shading. So instead of just going in one side diagonal hatch, our line is actually moving with the object in which we are drawing. This technique may also be commonly known as cross contour because you are not necessarily lifting your pen very much. You're just moving uh, back and forth. So you're crossing over at times. As you get closer to your light source, the shadows on your seaweed are also going to get lighter. You can tell that the seaweed that's on the left-hand side of my paper, the edges on the left-hand side are a lot more darker than the edges on the right-hand side. That is specifically because I am trying to emphasize the illusion of light uh, pushing in and through the water onto my seaweed. We're going to do the same thing here as we did with the seaweed we're kind of going to do with our blue whale. But keep in mind, the seaweed is short and small and its body is kind of, um, well, 
extremely minuscule or smaller than your whale itself. So let's kind of emphasize that and emphasize the largeness of this whale by doing long strokes, stretching strokes from one side of the whale's body to the other. Now think of where your fin might be tucking in and under and wrapping around a certain bone such as your, uh, your armpit bone or your ball joint that kind of connects the arm and the armpit together. Uh, keep this in mind because you're going to want to alter your line to kind of wrap around where those muscles and bone will be and this will give your your uh, blue whale more of a realistic effect and it's going to give your viewer more of a realistic idea of space and depth. So watch as I'm stretching this line from one side of the whale's body to the other and I'm kind of mimicking the shape in which the shadow is being drawn. So my belly is going to have a different direction because then my belly is wrapping from around my mouth, under my chin, under my chest, and up and around the tail. My line is also going to imitate that movement from the chin wrapping down under the chest and up and along the tail. So I'm going to have not a diagonal line necessarily, but more like a line that kind of ebbs and flows with the muscular skeletal structure of the animal that I am drawing at this current moment in time. We're going to imitate this process with the tail's whale, uh, the tail's whale, the whale's tail as well. Uh, the whale's tail, if you've ever seen it, kind of fans out. Uh, the bone structure fans out and then the muscle kind of wraps around the bone into the spine of the whale. So I'm going to imitate or mimic this kind of idea of how that muscle moves by adjusting my pen to move along with uh, where the muscle would go on a real whale. We're also going to do the same thing with the stomach. As I mentioned before, there's a dip from the tail under the belly and it dips down and then it rides up towards the mouth. As you're doing the belly though, you're going to want to lighten your pressure on your line. The belly is actually going to be a little bit lighter because it's lighter in color on the whale's body. The top of the whale is that bluish part and the bottom of the whale is kind of like that light gray or kind of yellowish part that you would find on a whale in real life. I am not only going to lighten my pressure for the stomach, but I'm also going to allow more white space to peep through my line on the stomach and chest region of my whale. After we get the general shapes of our shadows down onto the paper, now it's time to fine tune things. Don't forget to add your really dark eyeball and then try to think of the areas that are furthest away from the light source and the areas that tuck under the whale's body. These areas are going to have a little more shadow than the other areas that you have drawn specifically because you have that under shadow that's being cast onto the underbelly of your whale as your whale's body blocks the light source from hitting its underside and you're also going to be having the body parts that are further away or in, away from the light source itself that is also going to have a little bit of a darker layer of color to it so you're going to obtain this layer of uh, this layer of darkness or this this additional shadow by adding an additional layer of ink. You don't need to press hard at this point. Um, you can put your pencil or your pen marks close together or closer together and that's going to eliminate some of that white that we talked about earlier in class and uh, the more you eliminate that white the darker the shadow will become. If you happen to have drawn bubbles like 
I have. You're going to mimic the same rules that you used for your whale's body for the bubbles themselves. The underside of the bubbles are going to be a little bit darker than the body of the bubble itself. The top side of the bubble is probably going to be a little bit lighter if your light source is in the top right hand corner. So take these into consideration as you are putting in your shades. You can use the 3 two, one formula where you create one layer of ink all the way around your bubble except for on the highlight portion of your bubbles uh, shape and then uh, for your medium kind of shadow as it moves closer to the the shadowed area of your bubble you can add an additional layer and then you can add a third layer to the edge of the bubble and the underside of the bubble that's furthest away from the light source this is the most easiest way to explain value building or shadow building um, for this class. Now, uh, if you haven't done bubbles and you did a school of fish, then maybe you can do the same thing like you did with the whale's body, depending on where the fish are located. Just keep in mind, where is your light source and how is that going to define where your shadows or your shades are going to be placed? If you want to add a little more detail, like I don't know about you, but this right hand, it, this right hand corner on the bottom here, I feel like I need to put like an anemone or something or some kind of sea plant here to kind of give this negative space some sort of purpose. So I'm going to scratch in using kind of brush like strokes with my pen to kind of get that flowy anemone kind of uh, shape in the corner here. However, if you feel like your piece is complete the way it is, then don't feel pressured to mimic what I'm doing at this current moment in time. Remember, this is your art, your choice. You get to choose what you want in your background. And that, my friend, is how you can draw a beautiful blue whale using pen and ink and cross-contour shading techniques.